I'm Lynn Panting, and in January 2020, I came up with the idea of a multidisciplinary contact improv project. In March, COVID hit our province, and my plans had to change. This is a story of pursuit, figuring out how we make art after COVID. It's also kind of a dance film. In January, I kind of came up with this idea of um, a collaborative multi-disc project that involved a whole bunch of people from different disciplines and different backgrounds uh, with really different ideas about the world and how the world works. Um, and I wanted to get them together in the same room and work on a project that they might not ordinarily get 
the opportunity to and to kind of form a group of people that uh, are not constant collaborators. Um, and the whole idea was to have a little bit of a residency project where we all learned from one another and it was truly collaborative and the end project was going to be a site specific, um, an offering to the public uh, that involved a lot of contact improv. So it was a lot of touching and moving and grouping uh, as a unit, uh, which of course <laughs> became very impossible. So to just cancel the project outright without really thinking about it uh, just seemed a little bit foolish. So what I did is I sat on it. I waited uh, because, you know, when we got our grant results back, we didn't know what the world was going to look like in six months. Um, and once we got a firmer grasp on how we would be moving forward and um, Newfoundland moved to kind of a level two alert system where we could gather small numbers of people together safely, I formulated a plan. And it seemed to me that uh, we couldn't have a public performance, uh, but the most obvious thing to do would be to put the project on video. Um, and uh, the most obvious thing that seemed to me is also to do, to do a performance outdoors where it's a little bit less uh, high risk, um, but to not document a performance, to actually create a multimedia uh, collaborative video. And so Richie Perez, who was the videographer um, and he did, was director of photography and also did all the editing and cutting uh, of the production, he wasn't in my initial plan, but he very much became integral um, in a way that I could share um, you know, the project with the public. Hi, my name is Richie Perez. I am the videographer of the this project Pursuit by Lynn Panting. I also edited the video and helped helped piece it together. I had an amazing experience on this. It was a huge learning uh, experience for me uh, for video editing and um, and actually sh actually shooting video. I, I do more stills photography um, is my background, but I, I do love movement and and video as well. So this gave me a chance, and I'm really happy working with uh, with Lynn. She uh, she really helped open me up and uh, you know have somewhat of a vision of how this was going to look uh, and it was really neat to work with her because because she was she trusted me in being able to have to come up with ideas as um, as like the the videographer for this uh, this project
you've got a very diverse group of artists uh, involved in this project. Uh, and I'm wondering why, why it was those hands that you selected to kind of be involved with this? Yeah, I just wanted good people in the room. So uh, when I thought about who I wanted in the project, I thought about different personalities or someone that I have worked with for a very long time. Uh, like Mark, you and I have been collaborators for a very long time and you're one of my very favorite, the favorite uh, person to work with on the planet. Yes. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, but you know, I thought about people that I didn't know so well that I just saw a glimmer of. Um, I often work as a choreographer, so I get a couple of days on a project, which means I have an instant um, impression of what a person is and how they work um, and I don't necessarily get a long sustained relationship with that person and with that project so uh, vibes are very important to me um, and you know there's some people that you know you can immediately uh, work with and you can play off of one another and that's very exciting so those people that I haven't had a chance to have in-depth work with I now had a chance to bring them in the room and then for us not to be on under the umbrella of someone else but for us to be under the same umbrella which is my umbrella so I really thought about that and I thought about loud voices quiet voices measured voices passionate voices and really who was up to say yes Vanessa Cardozo my name is Hillary oh my name is Kay Bryan my name is Alex Abbott my name is Kevin Woolridge my name is Colin Furlong uh, my name is Mark White. I do clowning, I dance flamenco, and I do living statue, like a performer. Uh, yeah, I do lots of things. <laughs> um, I'm a dancer and an aerialist. Oh, I am a uh, multidisciplinary artist. I work in uh, sculpture, installation, video, and drag. My artistic practice is primarily musical theater, so acting, singing, dancing. Um, my artistic practice is primarily in uh, theater arts, but also in music and writing. My artistic practice is I'm an actor. Uh, I am a theater artist and uh, as of late, professionally, I am an architect. I get inspiration from dance, like uh, most of times, because I really like movement. I'm not actually like a dance dance, but movement inspired me a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I think is most start in the movement kind of process. I very much like Lynn stem from music. Um, so I find that I create best when I have um, something to move off of, whether it's, uh, usually it's auditory, so with music. Uh, sometimes I like, uh, I like to create everything with a storyline. Um, so then I weave something in within it as well. So we're in uh, incredibly unprecedented times yes <laughs> pandemic covid all that jazz yeah how has that affected your process as an artist hmm. uh it's it's interesting because i feel stagnated but also that things are possible and that anything could be possible but very stagnant. I feel like I can't make any decisions until this period of time is over, but throughout the process have been really focusing on, um, you know, moving my body, being able to get into my body. And that's something that I often forget that I need within my life. Um, so I feel that throughout this time, I've just been really rooted in um, groundingness and artistic practice as opposed to creation at this time. Um, I guess it depends on the piece. Uh, Usually it's uh, a very non-linear sort of poetic thing. I would say most of my focus these days is on drag, so maybe I'll speak more to that. Um, that it usually starts with a song I really wanna do that either I can see a lot of camp and comedy potential or something that really hits me in the feels. Um, or it starts with a very specific, bizarre costume piece I want to make, and then I build a number around that. Could also be just like a, a striking visual, and I think, how can I build an environment or a whole world around this? Um, since COVID, we've stopped performing live, um, so we've been doing digital drag brunches, and uh, I'm a video artist in another part of my practice, so this has just allowed me to take what I do as performance art and drag, and merge it with my video practice. So now I'm making like drag art videos. My my creative process is a little bit more 
I think, linear than a lot of people's here, because um, I started as an artist in the music side of things, but as a, a music director, as an arranger, so for me, it, it's typically a very step-by-step -step process. Everything has to be done in a certain order for me to feel confident about the final product, which has been totally different from this process, which has been kind of great. <laughs> so we're in the unprecedented time of COVID-19 and the pandemic. How has that affected or impacted how you are creating work and how you go about uh, working as an artist? It has definitely impacted where my creative ideas come to life. So typically if I'm working at home, it's on musical charts or it's on making recordings for people. So it's, it's much more of a methodical process, but I've had to kind of take some of my creative work into my home now, which is a new experience for me. So trying to keep trying to differentiate my process but keep it all in the same room has been a real challenge for me um so i find kind of breaking up my day into the creative portion and the non-creative portion has has been a, a key for me um so most of my work has to do with um intimate theater uh where the audience and actors are very close to each other um in a very small space so that that practice is completely on hold and I have no idea when it's gonna come back yeah is there anything that you're finding that it, I guess is inspiring a new way of working or inspiring uh, a, a, an augmentation or development of your existing process I mean it's giving me a lot of time to think mm -hmm. um, and time to write I've been doing a bit more writing that's pretty much it and, uh, yeah my usual creative process I <laughs> I don't know. To me, it seems like it's a it's a it's a little boring, but it works for me. Like if if I get cast in something, I mean, I guess this is it. Only makes sense to me. But I start with the words, and I kind of get comfortable with the words. And as I'm going, I like to build the character. Uh, once I'm confident that I know what they're saying, I know some people like to do it the other way. Some people like to build a character and they worry about the words later. But for me, I'm I'm very much a words based actor for sure. After I after I know the words, then I build the physicality. So. We're in the, this unprecedented time of COVID-19 and the pandemic and everything got shut down. How has this, the time that we're living in affected your creative process? For me, I mean, you know, I, I'm an actor. I, I, have, I have written things, I've collaborated on things. I've kind of, you know, uh, half-heartedly, not half-heartedly, full-heartedly, but I'll say half-ass directed things in the past. But for the most part, I'm an actor who you hire to bring in to do a job. I don't do a whole lot of like from the ground up creation. So th this whole thing is completely stalled any career for me. Uh, so I was so thankful when Lynn got in touch and said, hey, I'm doing this project. It's gonna be a bunch of artists collaborating, working together. And I'm like, oh my God, artists working together, <laughs> like in the same room? Yeah, okay, I'm in. For a while there, when I was doing theater professionally full time, um, I suffered from a lot of stage fright. Um, and I think it, it sort of did come from that, that I, I didn't want to disappoint people. Like I didn't want to drop a line on stage because then I would be screwing up the entire show for everyone involved. Um, and for a while there, it started to really, really take its toll. And then I kind of backed off uh, performance, did more administrative work, and then eventually went to school to do architecture. But now that I'm back doing more theater and more performance, um, I think I have a bit of a healthy grasp on that fear. And sort of that fear forces me to play within the limits of the show and to try different things. Uh, and to kind of experiment or push limits and not be afraid to actually make a fool of myself because it's like it's called play for a reason The big thing that changed for me when the pandemic happened was the closure of theaters and performance spaces Because that was the thing that's the only thing that I did outside of work. I would uh, You know go have a pint at the ship or I would go see a play or sometimes, you know, two in one night um, and so the biggest thing that I've kind of learned or the biggest thing that I missed was theater and not just going to see a performance or um, you know being able to be in a production or work on a show it's being in those spaces with other people 
having like a theater is a, a really really interesting and incredible beast in that you've got 100 200 people in a room and whatever's happening on stage you're all experiencing that at the same time but you're all going through completely different experiences and going through that with a group of people being able to leave the theater or the performance space and just like acknowledge to each other through dialogue or just like a knowing glance like that okay we've we've all been transformed or experienced something during during covid i was sent home to work from home to uh um and to self-isolate and i didn't have much to do i i did these co-videos with music videos that helped me a lot to learn how to video edit i've always had a had a sense of video editing but i learned a lot through the pandemic um, just being at home at night editing videos of my music videos and I think that helped me a lot to prepare for for what what I did to work with Lynn and everyone else um, what the difference was was I was doing a lot of video editing editing and I was letting a lot of people shoot the videos themselves to make these little music videos um, but uh, this actually gave me a chance to actually shoot video when when the pandemic kind of softened up a bit or that our self self isolation um was a little loose about letting us go out and uh get together to to shoot and we shot outdoors which which was was safe to do and um that 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 gave me a lot of uh a lot of new experiences shooting the last few months of quarantine has made me appreciate collaboration more and more. Um, a lot of Newfoundland theater um, comes uh, less from uh, a structured system and more from a collaborative room. Um, for me, I do think that's where you get the best results. Uh, certainly a, a person in charge to facilitate um, and you know, you want to have a director with a vision that you can all share in, but I really think, uh, you know, all hands towards the same pursuit. I think that is ultimately my artistic practice and it just came out in this project um, and just understanding the importance of that and understanding the importance of dialogue and how um, it can lead uh, to magic. After polling the participants, we settled on a mixed uh, rehearsal schedule of virtual content, one-on-ones, and physically distant group rehearsals. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the project. Um, the first question for your creative Q&A is uh, for you to tell us or show us about your favorite place.
This piece is not about COVID-19 by any means, but we couldn't help but be influenced by the barriers put in place around how we rehearse, how we act, how we're feeling about how we practice art, how we feel about being in community, how we feel about being in physical contact. So it, it's an under theme that runs through everything that we're doing in this piece. Two of the participants, Alex and Colin, had some contacts in common and were comfortable uh, with creating a bubble. So we rehearsed them in a contact duet separate from the rest of the group. The idea was that, um, you know, we've all been engaged in a social contract where we're not in physical contact with one another. And having this duet really juxtaposes our experience uh, lately with COVID um, and also is a major transgression against the rules. I like to explore vulnerability in my work, in particular platonic tenderness. Uh, there's something really interesting about masculine energy and platonic tenderness that I don't think we see represented very often. It's something that I've explored in a couple of my works now, and it was really great to bring it into this project. We rehearsed the duet separate from the rest of the group so that it would have more impact uh, when we connected everything together. So myself and Alex and Colin knew that we would perform the duet at a particular rehearsal date um, during a particular exercise, and we did so without giving the group warning. And the idea was to see how people reacted to this transgression. We've all been uh, physically distant for so long and you're not unable to hug our friends. I just wondered what it would feel like to have two people um, break the rules and do something taboo. And it was a really interesting part of the process. It certainly took everyone aback and added an extra attention to the movement. This has been a godsend, an absolute <laughs> godsend. Uh, number one, just be working again uh, after so many months of not working. Number two, being around people, even in a socially distant way, uh, and around artists and working artists in a collaborative environment. That's, oh, that's manna from heaven. And also, um, I haven't had much of a movement practice, um, although it was something I studied very heavily when I was doing my master's. So this has kind of reintroduced me to that world and I love it. I leave rehearsal and I'm smiling the entire way home. Um, when we got in the room the first day, I mean, everybody was super nervous because it was a completely different sort of room set up. Uh, I've never been in a rehearsal room where everyone has been so far apart with the idea that we were all going to get so much closer together. Um, I was really nervous. And as I'm sort of watching everybody do stuff, I'm realizing how good everybody is. Um, it's been interesting. I'll admit that I had uh, some nervousness, a bit of trepidation at the onset. I think the fact that Newfoundland is doing so well uh, in terms of COVID cases allowed me to relax. Um, I'm used to being in a really familial environment performing in drag. You know, we have like a one stall bathroom as our change room most of the time. So you're crammed in there with seven other artists. 
and I really miss that sense of like creative connection. So I'm really grateful for this process that it's given us that in a way where we can, like I can still feel safe doing it. Um, and it's also been like a unique restriction to have to work within uh, from a movement perspective. Uh, I also do clown and both with clown and with drag, I feel like there's a lot of engaging the audience. There is kind of getting up close and personal with people. There's a lot of eye contact. And so to try and create that same emotional tenor without all of the elements that I'm used to incorporating or to some degree relying on has been uh, like a good growth opportunity for me, I think. And also the team is awesome. So I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. All of a sudden we have this larger bubble that we have to work within. Um, and so in a way that I going into it thought that that would limit um, choreographic processes just because everything is within one space and it's much more interesting when you cross paths with someone and bump into someone and move with someone um, but I found that a lot of the stuff that we've been doing has been connecting within and connecting with our body which you know I find very um, intuitive to myself which has been interesting to hear and hear from other people their shared experiences of how um, their body has felt throughout this process and how you know your body you can feel tension in your hands and that creates an emotion and so that's that whole mind-body connection so I've, I've always felt like that I know other dancers do too but working with such a diverse group of people it's been really uh, interesting to hear that other people feel that too so yeah it's it's been fantastic it has been a little strange uh, because of course, normally when a bunch of artists, uh, especially multidisciplinary artists and all that get together to work together, there's an energy in the room. And even though we have that energy in our room, it doesn't carry over to five o'clock or it doesn't carry over to 10 o'clock or when rehearsal gets out or whatever, we all kind of very cordially say, well, that was a lovely day and walk out the door and go our own way. And that's not what I'm used to. I'm, I'm used to everyone saying, okay, well, why don't we come over to my house? Or why don't we have a beer? Or why don't we go play some music? Or so, we, it, it's been a wonderful, uh, it's been a wonderful like dip of the toe back into working and performing and creating again. But mm. it's certainly been a different process. Um, this process has been really great in that it's kind of a return to a, a lot of my training that I did at Sheridan. So I haven't really gotten to work in this way since leaving school. Um, so that's been really nice. But I'm also the kind of person who my social life and my work life tend to bleed together a lot so when i'm doing a show that's the people i socialize with for that month or two months and it's been very strange wanting to socialize with all these wonderful people and having that barrier still of being in the room and being able to talk but not being able to really get that same amount of closeness that i love doing musical theater productions and having that cast family unit so that's been an adjustment it's it's been weird yeah it, for me it was like oh we still hope <laughs> still hope like because like i said stay like we can do anything then we finally able to get together and uh, dance we saw the people and yeah it was really like um for me it's like yeah hope therapeutic actually <laughs> yes I, uh, it was great working with people the um, I, I i felt like i like out of after all this uh this finished i i learned a lot from uh, from everyone that was there i uh, it felt like family um meeting everyone all the performers and um and everyone that went over there along with with myself we did this on a on a rainy morning, and uh, we all thought that it was going to be uh, not a good day to do it. But it turned out to be really uh, like everything just just started coming together throughout the day, and we shot this within like four hours or so. We picked the Nair strip out in Bell Island. That's off of Newfoundland. Um, it's like a 20 minute ferry ride and it's this abandoned airstrip well no planes land on it anymore but um, it was it, it was a different place to go and shoot and it was it, it seemed like a really cool spot to to do this.